So it sounds like basically since October, you've already been operating under the premise that you are retired, but yeah. now to actually put it in print, so to yeah. speak, what are the emotions that it's Yeah, I mean, official. It's weird, you know, like you play this game uh, for so many years. I mean, 18 plus years in the NBA. It's just a weird transition. You know, there's an, I mean, every athlete goes through it. You know, a lot of people say that an athlete dies twice. And in some ways, you know, without being salacious, that's it's true, you know, like if you want to enjoy and be happy the rest of your life, you have to in some ways say goodbye to your former self and, and that's not easy. But I think just knowing that I'm going to have to deal with this and I'm going to have to accept it and, and find new ways to, you know, challenge myself and enjoy myself, uh, you know, I think I'll get there. Take us back to October. How did you and the Lakers arrive at the decision that you would sit out the season? I finally... You know, realized it wasn't happening. You know, um, I'd been rehabbing and fighting to get back on the court for the majority of 18 months and training twice a day. It was like, in some ways, in the best shape of my life. And in other ways, you know, over that 18 months, I'd played so little. I, I just was like so unprepared to kind of wave the white flag in respects. And it even sounds, it even pisses me off to say that right now like it makes me want to like go try again but you know the reality is it's it, it wasn't going to happen what was your relationship like with Kobe as a teammate you know, it was a great experience for me to to see how he works um, at the same time we barely played any games together and we've both been injured the vast majority of, of my time here so frustrating disappointing um, in the big picture but it was it was also a great experience just to you know to be around him see the way he approaches the game. I had incredibly high hopes coming here. You know, I was excited, inspired, and, and wanted to do great things in the city. And, you know, it didn't happen. But a big part of why I came here was because I wanted to be in the fire. I wanted to be judged. I wanted to be under pressure in my last chapter. I didn't want to, you know, fade off. But like a Carl Malone, like a Charles Barkley, you know how it is. You win MVP trophies, but if you don't have championships, people throw that in your face what is that like just to to get that question that's fine like that's fair game I don't I don't uh, hide from that I didn't win a championship I don't get caught up in legacy or, or where I fit in and, and that's never the reason I played the game you know I always played the game for the moment for the opportunity the challenge to, uh, to try to get better to try to you know transform myself into a better player and if I leave anything behind I hope it's that I was a great teammate and a great competitor and you know, if, if people, if, a, if the, a championship is a huge component in, in your success, that's fine. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't affect the way, how much I enjoyed my career. You know, I'll always be, be disappointed. I never won a championship for sure. Um, but, you know, there's a lot more to life as well.